Uh, my name is Shannon Bailey. I'm the chief curator at the World Chess Hall of Fame. And I'm here to briefly introduce uh, two beautiful, wonderful, brilliant minds tonight. Uh, we have Guido Vanderverve, our artist, and Bradley Bailey, uh, who is a professor here at St. Louis University. Uh, also co-curated the exhibition Sound Moves, uh, where music meets chess. Uh, that I also co-curated at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Uh, I first met Guido in 2011, and Bradley can talk about that a little bit more, when he was one of, our, one of eight artists in our inaugural exhibition, Out of the Box Artists Play Chess. Uh, Guido performed this piece one week after we opened, and people have been talking about it ever since, so we have wanted to bring it back what, for 12 years, and we were happy to basically plan a sh show about music. It was something that we had wanted to do, but it really was only going to happen if Guido's chess piano was going to make it back to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. um, if you haven't seen the exhibition, it is open until the 28th, so please come and see it. Um, I want to thank Guido for just being a great friend and a great artist to us. Um, for all these years, I want to thank uh, Roland Augustine, who is here tonight, who represents Guido um, at the Loring Augustine Gallery in New York. Um, I want to thank the musicians who you'll hear more about from Brian Woods in a few minutes, uh, who are, part are participating and performing tonight. Um, thank you to the staff at the World Chess Hall of Fame, especially Joy Bray, our general manager, and Brittany Moser, who did a ton of work putting this, uh, or this performance together tonight. And a special thanks. I just want to add, thank you. That was really <laughs> nice to work with you. Oh, that's so sweet. And a real special thanks to Rex and Jeannie Singfield, who make all of this possible. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bradley is an associate professor and program director in the art history department at St. Louis University here. He has a long history with chess in St. Louis with the first exhibition, Marcel Duchamp, Chess Master at the St. Louis University Museum of Art in 2009 which corresponded with the first U.S. chess championships held in St. Louis and the opening of the chess club in 2008. Um, let's see, uh, he also wrote the accompanying book, Marcel Duchamp, The Art of Chess, co-authored with Francis Nauman and the women grandmaster, Jennifer Shahade. He later curated two exhibitions for the World Chess Hall of Fame, Out of the Box, Artists Play Chess, as I mentioned, in 2011, and Strategy by Design, Board Games by Michael Graves in 2014. He has also written about the work of artist Marcel de Zama, who he met through the World Chess Hall of Fame and wrote the book, helped with the book Marcel de Zama, Sower of Discord, published by Abrams in 2013. Now on to Guido. <laughs> Guido van der Ver was born in the Netherlands and, is, and currently lives and works in Berlin. He pursued studies in industrial design, archaeology, music composition, and Russian language and literature at several, several universities in the Netherlands before beginning to create his first video documented performances around the year 2000. Since that time, he has created a variety of works, including films, videos, artist books, and this innovative chess piano. You are in for a beautiful evening. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. And here are Guido and Bradley. I'm going to very carefully move this chair. Guido has pointed out that should my knees hit anything under this extraordinarily delicate instrument, it could be a big problem. So I'm going to yeah. move somewhat far away from it. <laughs> so there's no problems. Okay. Guido, welcome back to St. Louis. It's hey, so great thank you. to have you back. Um, Guido's bio, his, you know, his, his history is all over the internet. Amazing stories have been written about him by the New York Times and Art News and other great uh, publications. So rather than going back and kind of going into, uh, into your history, I say we just talk about this right here because we've got plenty to talk about with this in the short amount of time we have uh, for a discussion. So uh, when you were younger, I will, I will mention this, when you were younger, you wanted to be at either the same or different points uh, in your life, you wanted to be a chess grandmaster and you wanted to be a concert pianist, correct? I wanted to be a concert pianist. Um, my father was a, a painter and a drawing teacher, so we went to see a lot of Dutch masters. But I love music way more because it moves you. And... Uh, well, Chopin was my god, so I played romantic classical music. But then um, 
When I uh, was about to finish high school, I thought I'm just not good enough because you know you would practice eight hours a day, and I also thought, well, I don't know if that's a good life because then you're as good as your last performance. I like to put a dot behind things, <laughs> although this thing doesn't really work like that. But it's nice if you make a video, uh, you know, you put a dot behind it. And when I was in art school, I was working in cinema, and I saw people laughing and crying in the cinema, mm. just like they do in a concert hall. Right. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to make films with music. And so that is what you're seeing uh, behind us here. These are all stills from uh, films that Guido has made throughout his career. And uh, one thing we you know, have to take into account when we think about Guido's work, especially in this case where all we're seeing are still images. We're not seeing mm -hmm. the fact that these are artworks that involve duration. Yeah. And duration is something that's an important part of your work, isn't it? Yeah. Um, duration and in some cases artworks that put the viewer in or attempt to put the viewer in your position of really experiencing time and mm. time as something that exists in a, a, in a epic kind of scope uh, your work i mean you talk about chopin and i know rachmaninoff is another of your favorites you love these uh, romantic uh, mm -hmm. musicians who create these you know, sort of epic pieces, and your work kind of follows in that tradition, doesn't it? Yeah, but um, in my opinion, boredom is a luxury. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to share that. And you also, you're also a big fan of isolation, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm a definitely a total loner. <laughs> Uh, one of the, they're, they're scrolling through, and we were just talking about one of uh, Guido's films. Um, the, the, uh, the title is I Didn't Turn With The World For A Day. Yeah. Is that, that's the basic title. Guido went to, now was it the magnetic North Pole? Yeah. Is it the, so you went to the magnetic uh, North geographic Pole? Geographic North Pole. Geographic yeah, North Pole, because yeah, exactly. I know they're technically different. I don't know yeah. what the difference is, but I know they're different. Yeah. So you went to the geographic North Pole, yeah. and you turned with the earth for 24 hours. Against it. Against the yeah. earth, so that you, it, the earth was turning, but you were not. You were facing yeah. the same direction for 24 hours. No, also when I was in art school, I was a bit uh, disappointed with the art I saw because I missed the directness that music had. And I was thinking, why is music so direct? And I concluded that composers use their state of mind as a searchlight to find something that says everything in the shortest possible uh, time. And that uh, abstraction to mood makes it universal so other people can you know, carry along. So I thought I'm gonna, as a, a visual artist, I'm gonna try to do the same. So I'm gonna be guided by my uh, state of mind I like that, you know, Freud, Freud said uh, chance only strikes the attentive mind. Mm. So I try to have an attentive mind. <laughs> and um, when I made this piece on the North Pole, I was walking around and, uh, you know, we all sat there returning with the world. And like a loner, I thought, is that necessary? And then conceptually, I was thinking, no. Because if you'd fly to the North or South Pole, and stand there for 24 hours and turn the other direction than the earth, you skip a day uh, turning with the world. <laughs> so you basically, like I stood there and I kept my shadow straight in front of me and just followed it. Like a sundial. You, kind of, but then <laughs> against the sundial. <laughs> right. Basically I was just following the sun. So it was still sundial. A lot of your work involves endurance, right? Endurance mm. is a big part. Because right? when I think of musicians, one thing I certainly think about musicians, especially someone like a concert pianist, is the, you know, the endurance, the pure mm. stamina yeah. involved in playing a Rachmaninoff piano concerto yeah. that's 40 some minutes long. Now, your love of Chopin is the foundation of another work that truly involves endurance. Maybe you can talk about home. Sure, yeah, well, um I lived in New York, and uh, like you said, I like Rachmaninoff, and he's buried in upstate New York. 
And then at that time I was doing, I've always done an insane amount of sport. I think it's uh, meditative uh, for people who can't sit still. And uh, I thought, let's visit uh, Rachmaninoff's grave. And it's 35 miles uh, from Manhattan upstate. So I decided to run there. And I called. He hasn't even gotten started. <laughs> you got to hear this. Well, then I, uh, yeah, then I did it the first time. And then uh, next year, performer asked me to come up with a, 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 a performance. And then I made it open. So we did it seven years in a row. And then um, I was obsessed with running. And then I really wanted to run a marathon under three hours. And when I finally did it in 2013, in Berlin, I came over to finish 257. I was like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I just didn't know what else I should be doing. <laughs> so then I decided to start to do triathlon. And I thought, okay, now I'm going to become a triathlete. So you're doing the Ironman. <laughs> yeah. Biking, then, swimming, sure. running a marathon. And then I also... Uh, like you said, I love Chopin and his story when he died is quite a poetic story, I think, because yeah. uh, he died in France. Originally, he's from Poland. And at that time, it was not uncommon to be buried alive. And he was terrified for it. So when his sister came to his uh, dying bed, he asked, after I die, take my heart out and bring it back to Poland. And so his heart is buried in the Church of the Holy Cross in Warsaw and is buried in, is buried in Père Lachaise in Paris. For me, these two uh, things, you know, it's a beautiful story. So, well, actually, I can start from his heart and do seven and a half Ironmans in a row and end up at his body. And... Um, <laughs> At that time, I was doing so much sport, and I thought probably I'm doing that for a reason that's hopefully universal. And a lot of people actually watch sport on television, no idea why, but they do. <laughs> so I thought maybe I can get away with it. And it's also a nice visualization of the distance. So. And in fact, we're looking at some stills here from yeah. this performance. So he's also being followed by... A film crew during well, all of this. Well, yeah, yeah. crew maybe is, is exaggerating, but you're being filmed while you're doing this. Well, that's, yeah, the, uh, there was one storyline of me doing the triathlon from Warsaw uh, to Paris, and it was an autobiographic film. And when I was a kid, I had two uh, idols. One of them was Chopin, the Alexander the Great was the other one. And they both left their home when they were 19, and they never returned. Mm. And at that time, I'd been living in many different countries, and I thought, where is my home? I don't know. And I just turned 35, so I guess I had a midlife crisis or something. <laughs> so I thought, okay, no, let's make a film called Home. And um, I made that film about Chopin. I filmed where... Alexander the Great was born, where he uh, spoke to an oracle and until where he went in India. And I mixed that with my own childhood memories. Sorry. <laughs> so it's just about these three people. Right. And it's, um, um, it's out of fiction from my point of view. Those were important memories for me that somehow... Um, I like the uh, time element of memories yeah. because certain elements, you memories are still there. I don't know why, but it's uh, it probably has a reason why I remember these things. So I filmed them, and I uh, wrote a requiem as a soundtrack. But uh, I was a bit nervous. I thought, well, I don't know if it's going to work, you know, linking me to Alexander the Great, uh, <laughs> Chopin, the, you know, my kind of silly childhood memories. But actually, it really uh, touched people. Yeah. So it's still my favorite piece in a way. So before we run out of time, 
Where did the idea of this come from? Well, that was, uh, uh, again, very conceptual. Um, I moved to New York and then I uh, started to um, learn orchestration, so writing for different elements. I wrote a couple of pieces on the piano, but then I thought, let's do orchestration. <laughs> and then uh, I became a member of the Martial Chess Club in New York, and I thought, let's just become a grandmaster, why not? <laughs> So in New York, I was just reading uh, composition books and chess books. And they started to mix up in my head. Also, you know, the clavier, the keys of a piano are black and white. The, formally, it looks exactly the same. A chessboard has eight squares, octave. <laughs> and, you know, underneath it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I turned the H into an A, so this chess piano is an A minor for the music nerd. <laughs> Now, well, tune, now, tuning this is, is something, isn't it? What did the, the Jackson Tuners came? What did he say when he saw it? What was his response to, I have to tune this now? Well, there's a lot of uh, you know, mistakes I made when I made this because one of them is that you have to take the thing apart before it can be tuned. And you have I to tune it a lot, again. right? Yeah. Like every time you play, you basically have to tune and it. And then the other thing uh, was that uh, a soundboard uh, should be made out of cast iron because that doesn't shrink or expand. Mm. But, you know, I couldn't work with cast iron, so I just welded it myself. But actually now that the uh, room is filled with people, it will be slightly out of tune because it expands. <laughs> Great, thank you. Because you're all 15 watts. <laughs> Um, okay, conceiving of this is, is one thing. Any, anybody could, you know, maybe come yeah. up with an idea like that. Building it is an entirely, there is no manual. There was no. nothing to download. No. There was no book in the library. How do you go about actually practically constructing this unique well, I like challenges, and uh, besides a pianist, I wanted to be an inventor. And it just, you know, I'm kind of a restless spirit, which is probably why I think boredom is a luxury. So it just started to mix completely in my head. And also, well, it gets very uh, music theoretical because I put A minor on this row and A major on that row. And because minor and major parallel, it completely made sense. And because I started writing for an orchestra, the chess game also gave me certain harmonic uh, uh, groups. So I used the chess moves as also harmonic elements. And where'd you derive the game from? Uh, Leonie Judasin, he was you my chess coach. Master. Yeah. Who wrote the, wrote the exactly, match yeah. for you. Yeah, I asked him to write a chess match because he was way better in chess than I am, obviously. To uh, open with the King's Gambit accepted, my favorite opening. Write it in three uh, clear movements, because I wrote the music in three movements, and end in a stalemate. And I also asked him to describe what every move means, because some moves are waiting moves, some other moves are mistakes, some other moves are aggressive moves. So that helped me to write the music. So the move, in a way, kind of inspired the timbre, yeah. the sound of, of the composition. More the atmosphere. That's a better word. No, no, the waiting moves, you know, it's not expressive. And it, anyways, I spoke to the conductor, so it's a very pensive piece, you know. Chess is a very pensive thing to do. Yes, yes. So no, yeah introverted well we've got a great room for it we've got a great mm. space for it we've got incredible musicians who are here we have your opponent adam manis yeah. who has been working very very hard i know to prepare himself for this 
I mean, what for some people it might be a, a once in a lifetime experience, and hopefully this won't be a, a, a once in a lifetime experience for everyone here. But this is definitely a unique experience. There's no question well, about that. And you could have said the same thing 11 years ago. Here we are again. <laughs> and here we are again. So, um, I just want to say thank you all so much for coming. Um, again, you're in for something that is an incredible treat and, and a really, really unique experience. So I think uh, now is probably a good time to let everybody settle in, have another drink, have something to eat, and uh, we'll let everybody get ready and, uh, and have an, an amazing performance. Thank you again for being here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so it's not seven yet, but why don't we get started? That sounds like a great idea. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Brian Woods. I am music director here at the World Chess Hall of Fame. It is my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's performance of number 12 chess piano concert in three movements. We are very grateful to Dr. Jeannie and Rex Singfeld for all their support of everything at the World Chess Hall of Fame. This performance is a closing of sorts of our Sound Moves exhibit, which is still on exhibition until I believe January 28th is what it says in the program. Um, so do check out the last few days of this wonderful exhibit. Um, Bradley Bailey and Shannon Bailey have done such an incredible job co-curating this exhibit. I think they deserve a round of applause too. We have had such a good time collaborating with them on the music series as well. So this has been really a special time for those of us like myself who coordinate the music series and for working together at the World Chess Hall of Fame. Um, do check your cell phones that something's not going off during the concert. Um, this is a very contemplative piece and you don't want to ruin the mood as it were. Um, we are very grateful to have musicians here as well from the St. Louis Symphony. Um, they are fantastic friends and performers and I have been so glad to have them here with us collaborating with Guido. And um, I believe without further ado, we're ready to go. So everyone, please join me in welcoming Guido Vanderverve, Adam Manis, and our conductor for tonight, Darwin Aquino.